Is it going to rain or will be a sunny day? Weather affects us all nearly every day. Whether it's a thunderstorm that dumps our picnic, the snow and ice that make our drive to work take longer, the cold spell that requires our children to bundle up for school, or an event like the California drought that increases food prices. The weather impacts all of us directly all of the time. Most of us know that it was a change in the climate caused by either an extraterrestrial impact or a massive bout of volcanism that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, rise of the mammals and eventually emergence of humans. But since that time, weather and climate have also played a critical role in numerous events that have dramatically changed the course of human history. From D-Day to the American Revolution, weather has played pivotal moments in world history. For our chapter today, our learning goals are Understand and classify air masses that affect North America Describe the four lifting mechanisms in cloud formation Describe mid-latitude cyclones, their life patterns and weather changes And he review severe weather thunderstorms, derechos, tornadoes, and tropical cyclones. We're gonna start off air masses. Other than clouds floating by, we don't often think about air moving overhead. But on a daily basis, huge bodies of air called air masses pass us by in the atmosphere above. An air mass is not only large, it can be thousands of miles across and thick, it has uniform temperature, hot or cold, and moisture, humid or dry, proper stew. As air masses are pushed around the globe by wind, they transport the warm, cool, humid or dry conditions from place to place. It can take several days for an air mass to move over an area, which is why you might notice the weather in your forecast stays the same for several days on end, then changes and remains that way for several days, so on and forth. Whatever you notice a change, you can attribute it to a new air mass moving over your region. Weather events, I mean clouds, rain, storms, occur along the peri periphery of the air masses, at the boundaries, cow fronts. So where the air masses form, they call the air mass source regions, the outer the weather conditions of the areas that transverse air masses come from some of the hottest, coldest, driest and wettest places on Earth. Meteorologists call these air masses birthplaces source regions. You can actually tell where air mass is from by examining the name. Depending on whether an air mass is formed over an ocean, over a land surface, is called maritime or continental. So maritime air forms over ocean and other bodies of water and is humid, and is abbreviated by the lowercase letter M. Continental air originates over land masses and is therefore dry. It's abbreviated by the lowercase letter C. The second part of the air mass's name is taken from the latitude of its source region, which express its temperature. It's common abbreviated by a capital letter. For example, polar, letter P, is cold and originates between 50 degrees north and south and 6 degrees north and south. The Arctic is extremely cold, so cold is sometimes mistaken for the polar vortex. It forms polar world of 6 degrees north or south. Tropical, the air is warm to hot. It forms a low latitude, generally with 25 degrees from the equator. In the equatorial one with letter E is hot and originates along 0 degrees, the equator. Since the equator is mostly devoid to land areas, there is no such a thing as a continental equatorial air only maritime equatorial air exists. It rarely, rarely affects the United States. 
Frontist categories come to five combinations of air masses types that influence our United States and North American weather. Continental polar air, so it's cold and dry and stable. It forms over the snow-covered interior of Canada and Alaska. The most common example of continental polar air entering the United States comes in winter when the jet stream dips southward, carry on cold, dry continental air polar air, sometimes as far south as Florida. When it comes across the Great Lakes region, continental polar air can trigger lake effect snow. We're gonna talk about that later. Although continental polar air is cold, it also influences summer weather in the west summer. Continental polar air, which is still cool, but not as cold and dry as in the winter, often brings relief from heat waves. The next one is the continental arctic. Like continental polar air, continental arctic air is also cold and dry, but because its form is further north over the Arctic base and Greenland ice caps, its temperatures are generally colder. It's also generally only a wintertime air mass. Maritime polar air masses are cool, moist, and unstable. Those affecting the United States originate over the North Pacific Ocean and the Northwestern Atlantic Ocean. Since the ocean surface temperatures are typically higher than land, maritime polar air can be thought as a milder than continental polar or continental Arctic air. In winter, maritime polar air is associated with nor'easters and generally gloomy days. In summer, it can be lead to low stratus, fog, and periods of cool, comfortable temperatures. The maritime tropical air masses are warm and very humid. Those affect in the US originate over the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, the Western Atlantic, and the subtropical Pacific. Maritime tropical air is unstable, which is why it is commonly associated with cumulus development and thunderstorm and showers activity. In winter, it can lead to advection fog, which develops as the warm, humid air is chill and condenses as it moves over the cold land surface. You might remember from the last chapter. So, the continental tropical air masses are hot and dry. They are carried from Mexico and southwestern United States and only impact U.S. weather during the summertime. While the continental tropical air is unstable, it tends to remain cloudiness due to its extremely low humidity content. If a continental tropical air mass lingers over a region for any period of time, a severe drought can occur. Air masses can become modified as they move away from the source region. In the source region, air mass gains properties which are characteristic of their underlying surface. It may be cold or warm and may be dry or moist. The stability of the air can be derived. In general, the more unstable an air mass it is, more likely you are to experience unsettled weather, such as wind or rain. Tropical air is unstable because it has been heated from below, and polar air is stable because it has been cooled from below. As the air moves away from the source region, the air is modified due to the variation in the nature of the underlying surface. Two processes acting either independently or together may modify an air mass. An air mass moving over the sea is said to have a maritime track. This air mass will typically increase its moisture content, particularly in its lowest layer by evaporation of water from the sea surface, or on the other hand, and the air masses moving over the land with a continental track will remain relatively dry. As a cold air mass flowing away from the source region over a warmer surface will be warmer from below, making the air more unstable at its lowest layer. A warm air mass flowing over a cold surface is cooled from below and becomes stable at its lowest layer. Its source region and air mass gains properties which are characteristic of the underlying surface. It may be cold or warm and may be dry or moist, as you know. 
Another effect is called the Lake Effect Snow, is a result for the interaction between cold air passing over warmer lake water, generating snow that is deposited in localized regions downwind from the lake. Lake effect snow usually occurs during the late fall and winter months and is capable for producing as much as 2 to 3 inches of snow an hour with events total range from 6 to 100 inches. Extreme events are often highly localized, such as in the Buffalo, New York event that occurred in November 2014. The same phenomenon also occurs over other water bodies such as bays and seas, where it's called bay effect and sea effect snow. When cold, dry air moves across large areas of warm water, the cold air near the surface warms and begins to take on moisture from the lake due to the difference between the cold air aloft and warm air near the surface, instability causes water molecules to rise upwards, condense and eventually form clouds. The water molecules in these clouds freeze are eventually deposited downwind on the leeward side of these lakes as snow and the other types of winter precipitation. Lake effect snow currents and location is mainly dependent on wind we we'll talk about speed and direction, and topography. For instance, wind direction and speed can affect how narrow or wide a snow band is, as well as the length, whatever topography can influence snowfall rate. In terms of low lake effect snow, was first used to describe the snow events of North American Great Lakes region in the United States and Canada, where lake effect snow occurs in the leeward, downwind in the each lake. Again, Lake Erie is the only lake that routinely freezes each winter and once it does, lake effect snow seldom occurs. In the US, lake effect snow commonly occurs across northern Wisconsin, western Michigan, northwestern New York, northwestern Pennsylvania and the Great Salt Lake. <music>